All right, so the time has come to turn this in. And so five minutes is what I give myself to kind of identify quick things I can fix that are going to bug me until I can resubmit this for a better grade later. And some of those big things are going to be these sharp, uncut out shadows on the, the blossom. If you have any kind of watermark showing, those can really be a pain. Those shadows work some places, but then don't work so well other places. So I'm going to kind of clean it out at this bottom edge. Looks like it's really coming out from the front, my foreground element that we're looking past. And then some of these edges are a little too contrasted and not matching the, the leaf too much. Most of them are okay. But I'm just going to give it a quick once over. I do want to play with that the color balance on that. If I want to reveal a little bit more of that chanterelle kind of bouldering around the lake and cut away from what's covering it up. Yep. Let's see. My chanterelle stopped there. So that's kind of a pity. So what I can do is I can take my chanterelles, and this is fun. I can take some of it from in here. This is called internal compositing. Grab a lot of it. That's not seen because it's covered up by the lake anyway. Command J. Use my move tool. Move it over here to extend that texture out and beyond and then just kind of find an organic path through it. So it go, gets to my cropped edge. That looks better. Again, we're just finding the workable solutions. Sometimes internal compositing is necessary, which means cutting and pasting from something you're already using, from an element you're already using but you might want to distort it or use it in a slightly different way. Flip it, rotate it. Bop it, flip it, bounce it. Whatever that old toy was. Okay, I want to extend my composition out a little bit because I think there are some things working. I love the little shreds of onion under the water that I can take from the reference. But that means I need to crop out the edge, just using these five minutes for quick cleanup. And I can get that little highlight that's on the mushroom there, cut that out as it transitions into the foreground. Foreground, do I want to drop the foreground bottom? I think I do. Right to here. That means I can take these veggies. Oh, not Command T, Control T. And I can distort them slightly so that they reach the corners of where I'm going to crop now. and make more interesting shapes covering up my celery tree. Like so. Okay, my celery tree, instead of messing with the color balance of that, let's go right to that celery tree element. 
and let's go right to auto tone to really push the contrast. Man, that made it dark. So I'm going to undo that. And instead, I'm going to make a duplicate of it and say image auto tone. This is just speeding it up. And then I'm going to take its opacity down. So I use a little bit of that shadow in there. Then I use the layer behind to really shift the colors. And I'm going to go right to the big guns levels and decide if I want it darker or brighter. And I think I want it a little bit darker, but maybe goose the highlights a little bit. Remember, this is on a layer underneath. And now the color, I know I want it different, but I'm going to try to just massage it with the midtones. Let's push more reds into it, more magentas into it, more blues into it. So it really kind of shows up a little bit stronger. Let's go to highlights. Let's see what these do. Don't really want more yellow. Yeah, maybe want a little bit more magenta, a little less green. And then shadows, let's push those blues. Uh, not too much, though. So it still goes into the foreground. Okay. Now, maybe, just because it's a foreground element, let's try filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. It will remember the last settings I used. Let's go ahead and use those. Because remember, there's a layer on top of it that's kind of holding it back. And then I'm just going to dim the highlights a little bit, or the shadows rather, a little bit on this foreground lettuce by limiting the shadows just a bit. Okay, so for deadline style, let me see, I might do another auto tone of the celery. And now use pin light as a blending mode. There we go. So that helps differentiate it, gets it a little stronger. Maybe even push the levels even further. Now I'm ready to post something. Close the current window first. What's it talking about? All right, so let's file. Always save your work as a PSD first. Really work in PhotoP this time. And now I'm going to do file, export as a JPEG. It's going to go to Downloads. I see something I need to fix really quick. That's annoying. The background, I need to extend my ornamental cabbage background. But I'll have to do that later. <laughs> so remember, there are things that can be fixed. Okay, I find the JPEG. We can crop the JPEG really quick right within Preview on the Mac just by double-clicking on it and then finding the crop that you think works best for what you've got so far that shows off your three layers of depth. So if I need to, I can do this full cropping. Maybe even bring it in a little bit more. Okay, and then to crop within preview, it's just Command-K. This is a way that you're careful not to um, mess up your Photoshop file, right? Because you might want to return to that. And then because we're in preview anyway, you might go to tools and adjust color and just see what its auto levels do to the whole thing together. It will just kind of even it out. You can even play with, can you still read it when it's in black and white, taking the saturation out or when you intensify it? 
Maybe you want it to go a little sepia. Does that help the illusion? This is just fun we can have with the JPEG. But often I just like the defaults. And sometimes I just want to sharpen it all a little bit. <laughs> as long as it's 70 or higher, it's fine for the JPEG out of Photopea. Okay, now that I'm going to move to my desktop. And we're going to open Canvas up. And I'm going to edit my post where I already posted my sketch. And all you're required to post is your sketch and then a, a final composite by deadline. And then we will come back and use these later and learn how to improve them more. I'm going to upload the image, take my JPEG, put it in, and submit. Okay, and then remember to shrink it so that it's not ridiculously large. So we can actually see it on screen. And this is where we started today. And we've cut it out pretty nicely now. So everything's sitting together in our veggie scape. And now I want to organize my files, especially because we're going to do our critique and then be introduced to the next assignment, assignment two. So I go to my assignment one, I put my JPEG in there. I replace any older JPEGs. And I mark it with orange. And then I am finished for now. Mark my assignment PSD as green. And that has all of my different layers and my guides and all the potential to, to improve it and fix it later. That is important. All right. And all I need to do to be able to use a little bit more of this is to extend my, my background cabbage sky and just transform it. I'm just doing that in Photoshop really quickly because Photop was being weird. Then I might move my beat sun a little bit. You know, we'll have lots of fun playing with this when we put creatures into it. But I got something submitted before midnight tonight, and that's the goal. And then I can close up my folder. and be ready to do the next thing.